guys, so it's been quite a while since I last done an update. In fact, it was probably August last year. If any of you are doing a restoration, you know what it's like. It can take forever. You don't often have time to do it. And it's just one of them things that just gets put on the back bench. And I just try and do it when I can. So anyway, I do this on outside, as you can see. I don't have a garage which means I'm weather dependent as well. And being in the northeast of England makes it even harder because we don't get a lot of great weather. But anyway, I've got a little bit of time this week, so I have tried to make a little bit of progress on the old Land Rover. So what I want to do is just quickly give you a quick rundown of what I have done so far since I last did an update. And I'm going to start in the engine bay. So I've stripped pretty much everything off the engine now. I've got the distributor out, the oil filter assembly out, got all the belts off and on the other side I've got the alternator off, all of the manifolds are off and I give it a coat of rust inhibitor and then a few coats of engine enamel. Now I did this last year and as you can see it's already starting to rust through again. I mean, it does look a hell of a lot better than it was, but it's definitely starting to rust through again. But anyway, um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that now. I might just end up leaving it. It might just be a case that it's always going to keep rusting through. Um, but you never know. I might just give it another coat of rust inhibitor and redo it before I actually put all of the ancillaries back onto it. Um, what else? So you can see I've taken all of the steering joints out. This needs a, a little bit of work on it. I'm going to be replacing all of the steering joint ball joints. I'm probably, well, to be honest, I'm not sure what I'm going to do about the steering arms just yet. Uh, they're looking quite tatty and the suspension looks very tatty. And if you look down here, it's uh, the, the the axles and the the ball assemblies are all really tatty. So I guess what I'll probably do at some point is just disconnect the whole lot, pull the axle out and strip it down and give it a good clean. But that's probably not going to happen this year. What I am hoping to, to get done over the next few days is a little bit of the, the bodywork. I'll quickly put a picture up now showing you what it was like. As you can see, it's down to aluminium on the tub and I really don't want it to go another winter like that. So I am gonna try and get a coat of paint on it and I bought a five litre pot of Paintman Coach Enamel and it's gonna be painted in deep bronze green. And it is in there somewhere. We are in a bit of a mess, but actually don't know where I've put that. But anyway, you get the idea. It is a five litre pot. And I want to show you this now, what I've actually started. The sides, I've started to give the, the sides a, a bit of etch primer. You can see here where it's, uh, I've, I've given it a light coat of etch primer. Uh, I had a really bad hole here, so I've just been giving it a filler and sanding that back and you can see again it's back down to bare aluminium here uh, so I'm going to give that another quick coat of etch primer I need to get all of the galvanized parts here taped off and then I can spray the, the etch primer right up the edge because again this is bare aluminium and the paint needs etch primer to stick so I'll just pull back so you can see that it's just the tub I'm concentrating on today if we go around the back, you, you can see I've removed everything off the back. I'm not going to take these off because these are pretty uh, stuck in. And I'm pretty sure I can just tape around here and, and and paint up to them. But I've taken like the Land Rover badge off here. And I've taken the, the military number plate light off and any screws that were sticking in here. So I've been able to sand it down nice and smooth. Um, so the job today is just to get all of this masked off 
I'm not going to do the, the rear door today because I can remove that at any point. Uh, even when the weather's bad, I can remove that and paint that up in the shed. So that's not a problem. Um, again, yeah, we'll just get all this taped up and I'm going to give it a spray. I'm not sure if I'm going to start painting it today or not. And I am just roller painting it. I'm going to try coach painting. It's not something I've done before. But I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna roller it on. So I'll get the roller, roller it on, and then use a very fine brush and lay it off. And that's apparently how to do it. But uh, that would be interesting to see how that comes out. Bearing in mind that it doesn't have to be a, a fantastically great job on on this. I mean, it's a 50 year old ex army truck uh, i'm just trying to tidy it up a little bit and make it look a bit more respectable we're trying to do this on a minimum budget so i'm just gonna do a bit of video and just let you have a little look around how it's going Okay, so you can see I've got it masked up now. It doesn't need to be absolutely everywhere. I'm brush painting this and the masking tape is really just to prevent any overspray onto the galvanized metal from when I give it a light coat of etched primer, acid etch primer, I should say. So I'm gonna start that now and see how that goes. I'll put a link below for this stuff, it's really good. As you can see, it's just a very light coat that I'm putting on. To move on to the other side. Really only need to hit these areas where it's gone down to bare aluminium. These where it's got the old ex-military paint on, it doesn't really matter so, so much with the with the uh, etch primer, so long as I get this, because it won't stick, the, the enamel paint won't stick to this without a bit of etch primer. Right, onto the sides. As you can see, I've done most of the sides. I just need to give it a quick touch up where I had put some filler in. I'm keeping it really close to the bodywork with this U-Paul can's got such a good wide spray and it's quite accurate so it doesn't give too much overspray. Now I bought these from Paint Man, the foam rollers. I'm going to use the foam roller first, I think. I'll give that a go. There is a different type one there, which uh, is a softer one, but I'm going to try this one first. So we need to give it a good stir. Got an old wooden spoon here. Love this colour. Absolutely love it. I think all Land Rover should be deep bronze green. Give it a quick wipe over, make sure there's no... This will dry really quick. Hope you can see that. This 
this is kind of just to show you if you've never done this it's going to give you a bit of idea how hard or how easy it actually is so i know that you just roll it on quite quick i mean it's very bubbly Not sure why it's so bubbly. On this side there. Could have done with a slightly smaller roller, I think. Use the roller to get right into the edges up against the galvanized parts if I can. Right, let's see what happens when we lay this off. I know it doesn't look brilliant, I've got to say. <laughs> But then, what did I expect? I'm hand painting it. Let's get right into the edges. Let me put some more on there, I think. It kind of looks like what you would expect from an old Land Rover to be fair it's never going to be a concourse show car I mean it's an ex-military so the the body's actually not doing too bad for an ex-military if you ask me there's a lot of dings and holes and drill holes and stuff like that so yeah, I mean, the whole idea of this is just to tidy it up. Tidy it up enough to make it look half decent. Just lay that off once more. Oh, you see there's corners that I'm missing there. That's not easy to get into. Ah, oh, I should not have put that one in there, should I? Should not have used that brush there. Should I use the smaller brush? Never mind. Never mind. You live and learn. All the way around this. Right, so let's just see what happens if we give it a, a thin laying off I mean I can always give it another coat later on if I wish well it's definitely green again Let's do the other side. <laughs> All right, so that took about 15 minutes, I think. So that's not too bad. Uh, it looks all right. 
it's obviously not brilliant, but I'll wait and see how it dries. There's a high chance of getting flies and bugs and dust and all sorts in this. So, I mean, I knew that it was not going to be the best paint job in the world, but so long as it smartens it up. So I'm going to do the rest now. We'll come back to it uh, once it's done. Okay, guys, so that's pretty much it. I've painted the two sides of the tub and two ends of the tub. Now, I noticed when I was roller ringing that I actually seem to be getting a nicer finish with just the roller and not laying off with a brush. So what I've decided to do is I've decided to just roller one side and then I can compare the results when it dries off properly and see which I prefer. And it's gone on all right. It's quick, quick enough job. It's quite easy to do. There's no, doesn't appear to be any runs. What I am struggling with out here is obviously I've got all sorts of little bits floating around from the, the hedges over here and little pieces landing on which I'm no doubt going to have to sand back when it dries and just to try and touch up um, maybe in the autumn time but you can kind of see the colour difference there if you look at the Land Rover I like it Anyway I'm going to show you a close up now of the rollered side which I then laid off with the brush and then this side where I've just used the foam roller and so you can see how it looks close up. So I don't know how easy it is for you to see here because the sun's actually on it now. But if you look at the finish, what I see, and I'm not sure if you can or not, is that there's no brush marks obviously because I didn't use the brush. But if you look carefully, there you go. You see here, you can see all these little bubbles. Now I have no idea if they're going to end up coming out or if they'll stay, we'll just have to wait and see. But it looks pretty good, I kind of like it without the brush marks. Now let's go around the other side and have a look at it where I've used a brush to lay off as well. Okay so if you look at this side you can see, you can definitely see the brush marks. Still looks all right though. It's probably really difficult for you to see in this light, but it's shiny. <laughs> the only problem with having it shiny and looking good is you can really see how poor the panel is. And uh, I mean, not poor in terms of Land Rover standards, if I'm honest. Now this is what I was talking about. These are the kind of things that just keep floating on and there's absolutely no way to get that off. It's just stuck on there. What a nightmare. And they're coming all over it. But yeah, so it looks pretty good actually. The brush strokes haven't kind of come out as much as I'd hoped, but I, I'm quite happy with that. But if you look up here, you can see how poor the paintwork is around here. But you know, I don't care. It's an old Land Rover and it's certainly tidied it up. And if you look around the back here, big contrast in colors to what it was. Again, this is rollered and laid off. Doesn't look that bad, doesn't look that good either. And this side. I'm pretty sure it'll look all right once I get all this blue masking tape off as well and the rest's done as well. Uh, when you look at it from a distance from here, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? It's just when you get up close, and um, which is fine anyhow i'm going to leave this for a few hours i might try and come back out later on this evening when it starts to dry off a little bit take off all the mask and tape at that point and we'll run the video camera over it so you can get a proper look at it okay so it's a few hours later now and the paint's pretty much dry and it's still a little bit tacky and the verdict is i really like it i definitely prefer the side where I've used the, the brush and laid it off. So this side here, it does have brush strokes on it, but it just looks so much better than the other side. I mean, the other side looks fine from a distance, but when you get close up, it's all bubbles. So that'll be all right for this winter. I'll leave it like that, but um, 
it'll probably end up being sanded uh, back slightly and then just having another coat where I use a brush and lay it off. But overall, I'm really happy with it. It's definitely improved it. Okay, have a look at it, see what you think. If you like it, leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you see future updates and see how my Land Rover progresses. Okay, cheers.